Hello, welcome to Chapter 5, Section 3, Solving Quadratic Equations by Graphing and Factoring. In this example, we are going to do a physics problem. Now, I know I have been saying this for a long time. I would love for my Algebra 2 students to be taking physics at the same time they're taking Algebra 2. But the truth is, is it'd be better for you to be taking physics the same time you're taking calculus. So if, uh, if you, a lot of you are ninth graders and 10th graders, you're probably in biology or chemistry already. And physics will be your junior year. So it'd be great if we could do all this together, but it is what it is. Um, one of the things that like, uh, I, there's, there's only a few things I know a lot about. Okay, uh, and, and so I'm, you know, you'll, you'll hardly hear me ever talk about the things that I don't know a lot about, because I don't know about them. But one of the things I do know about is teaching math and science together. I, I, I wrote a paper on it. And um, so I put a lot of thought into this. I can honestly say that in my experience, the best thing for me in my high school and uh, college classes was when it seemed like the science and math people were talking to each other. Because um, if I could learn something in uh, science that reinforced what I learned in math, that was when it really, really made a connection for me. Um, and I wish we could do more of that. I really do. So I'm going to introduce an idea to you, um, something that's very, very important in high school physics and college physics. Just one little thing, just one little formula. And uh, you'll probably be seeing this a lot. So in this example, a soccer ball is kicked from ground level. And it's going to have an initial vertical velocity that's straight up of 32 feet per second. All right? So what's going to happen, and this is where I have to talk a little bit about physics. So here's the ground, and here's the soccer ball. And when you kick the soccer ball, here's a foot, okay? The path of this soccer ball is going to be described by a parabola, which is a quadratic function. And it kind of wobbled it a little bit there. And that's going to be true for any object that is in free fall, all right? So it's only affected by the initial force that got it off the ground, okay, that defied gravity, helped it defy gravity for a moment. But then gravity is going to catch up to it, and gravity is going to pull it back down until it comes back down to the ground. And if you guys are watching any sporting events, basketball, golf, soccer, football, where um, balls are either thrown or kicked or hit with a club, then if you, if you watch, you're going to be able to see this path. Now, that being said, there's other forces that take place. Um, there's something called the Bernoulli effect. So if, uh, for example, the stitches in a baseball, when you put a spin on that baseball, the, the um, ball is going to go in a certain direction based on the spin. The same thing happens with golf balls when there is a, uh, like the dimples on the golf ball. So then you get into like putting a spin on a soccer ball and it bends in a certain way and stuff. So there's more to it. So we're gonna keep this kind of simple for what we have right now. When we talk about the initial ver vertical velocity, there's two parts that are happening here. This is following this path. It's going this direction, which is horizontal, but it's also going this direction, which is vertical. So this formula we're gonna talk about is only dealing with the vertical part. Later you'll learn about the horizontal stuff too. So this is what the formula says, the height at time t in seconds is going to be negative one half g times t to the second power plus the initial velocity that's velocity at time zero so that's the velocity that the person kicking it gives it going up plus the initial height that's what these zeros mean now on earth this g is a constant. That's the acceleration due to gravity. So g is about 32 feet per second squared. In um, the metric system, it's about 9.8 um, feet per, sorry, meters per second squared. But the, this one, 
the we were given it in feet per second so we're going to be using um, the traditional English standard system so one thing you can do is you can change this to negative 16 because half of 32 is 16 negative 16 t squared plus the vertical oops sorry I forgot the t right there the um, initial velocity times t plus the initial height that's on earth if you're going to kick a soccer ball on the moon it's going to go f further because the gravity is not as great the gravity is one six but let's not make that too hard notice that this is a quadratic notice that it the, it's negative the negative tells me that the direction is going to be going down which is what happens to the gravity so if we have a point of reference where up is positive and down is negative that's what it is it's the the parabola is opening upwards which is what we learned about in section 5 2 all of these parameters are constants for this one time that the ball is kicked they change when I kick it again but for this one function these parameters are constant what are the constants that I know so we have the height at time t is negative 16 t squared the initial velocity vertical velocity the part going up is 32 feet per second so 32 T and it says it's kicked from ground level which means that the height is zero and I could have hidden that and I will now this is the height of the soccer ball at time equals zero seconds Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, at time seconds. We're going to do time um, zero in a second. It's the height at T seconds. So one second, two seconds, three seconds, however long the ball is in the air until it comes back down. So what I want to find out is what's the T here and what's the T here when it comes back down the ground? How many seconds will the ball hit the ground? So this one's obvious. At zero seconds, I'm, the ball is going to ha have a height of zero. But let's find out what the other one is. And it's so nice that whoever's kicking the ball chose to kick it at this velocity. So the height, when it hits the ground, is going to go back to zero. This is negative 16 t squared plus 32t. I'm going to factor this. So they both have a common factor of 16. However, I'm going to factor out a negative 16. So this is negative 16. They both have a t. That leaves the other t. Subtract 2. So that tells me negative 16 t equals 0. And of course, divide by negative 16 t equals 0. That's at the start, at the beginning. At 0 seconds, the height is 0. That's where the ball was at the moment it gets kicked. Now if you kick it exactly 32 feet per, per second upwards, and I, again, there's a, this isn't a class where we get to talk about like force vectors, okay? You have a vertical component and a horizontal component of the direction. I'm only dealing with the vertical part. T minus 2 equals 0. That tells me that at time 2 seconds, it's going to hit the ground again. Now obviously, we don't always kick with the same upward force, so the time is not always going to be a nice one. This is where the other skills we're going to be learning in this chapter are going to be important. But in this section, factoring, we're going to try to make things easier so you can factor. Okay? Um, there's a lot of information in this. It connects to um, physics and all the stuff we've been doing so far and you're gonna be able to see that but oh, I'm having such a hard time walking away from it we can even talk about here which is the maximum height of the ball which occurs if this is zero and this is two this is halfway because it's symmetric at one second and then you can put a one in here put it like negative 16 times 1 plus 32 times 1 and you can figure out what the height of the ball is gonna be there's so much here I'm just but I got to remember, I'm just making a video and we're not in class. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.